Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match between Kron Aberrant and Vicarin. Kron Aberrant is blue, playing Grekum, very quickly choosing his side, and Vicarin is playing... he's red, playing Ciso. And Kron Aberrant's in the north, Vicarin's on the east, and this is Alouette Mountain, a map we have, I don't think, ever seen played 1v1. It's a very large map. It's 512 by 512 units, which is the largest size map we have that anyone has really made. I think there's some maps that are 1024 by 1024, but no one has played those, and those were made back in alpha days. Anyway, this map is quite large. The players start out fairly close to each other, near the center of their respective sides, but there is an expansion behind their mains, and quite a few expansions along the edge, islands along the corners, and of course the other bases that were not taken. Since this is designed to be a four-player map, which the players are playing as a 1v1 map. Anyway. Vicarin is building up his economy quite quickly, and Kron Aberrant is also getting up his economy fairly quickly, pausing to get his perfect start with the Octos. And actually, wow, he's converting his Q Plasma into Liquid Crystal, so getting an extra RP, I think, early on. I'm pretty sure it gives you enough for that, but I haven't tested myself personally. Given that he has built two Octos and has 120, 135, yes, he is going for an extra RP on LC. So it's not a bad idea if you have no need for QP early game, which if you're not going for an Octobot early strategy with Grekim, you definitely don't. And Vicarin has decided to send out a Special Ops and, you know, Special Ops towards Kron Aberrant's base. His Marine is being sent, he's jumping back around a bit though, his Marine looks like he's being sent towards a nearby expansion, but he is sending his Special Ops towards Kron Aberrant's base. And this is at the 40, 45 second mark, it is being sent out, will hit about the, well, about the one minute mark. Kron Aberrant is just about to get hit by that attack, so here's a special ops in question at the 153 mark coming in attacking, but Sartel will go on because Kron Aberrant's construction all happened earlier in the past, and Kron Aberrant's just double checking to see what the attacks are happening, what's going on there. So he will be able to build up a, an Octo or two, get rid of the special ops, no problem. Vikran is just trying to figure out where his opponent is, and now that he knows, he's going to be able to expand in a wise direction, expanding towards the rear, well, behind his base essentially, to the east side of the map. And Kron Aberrant has not expanded yet. Kron Aberrant is getting ready with two Octos, sending them off in the opposite direction of the Special Ops, which will find Vikram's base and kill the, the Special Ops in the process. So these Octos are going to be basically stopping Vikram from seeing what Kron Aberrant is up to at the moment. But Kron Aberrant will be able to use them to see what Vikram's up to. And Kron Aberrant will see what Vikram's up to in about five seconds or so. And Vikram isn't really up to much. At this point, with the time waves that have gone by, there's nothing being exposed by Kron Aberrant going here. There's nothing being exposed by Kron Aberrant going here other than the fact that RPs have been built and Vikran is playing like Vikran normally does. Well, Vikran, on the other hand, at the 30 second mark, has... He's pulled back his special ops so he can better defend his base, pulling back his marine as well to defend against the Octos that were coming in. So it doesn't look like much has actually changed, and Kron Aberrant now, after seeing Vikran's orders, Vikran's construction orders, Vikran has actually expanded towards the southeast central expansion, and not towards the eastern expansion. He does have a marine here, but that marine will not be there once the blue time wave comes along. And these Octos are doing quite a bit of damage early on, but Vikran, probably not worried from his point of view, this is dealing a lot of damage, but he knows that he does have his units set up to deal with it, so it's not the biggest deal. It's still kind of worrisome for him, I'm sure, but not terribly worrisome. I'm sure he's aware of what's going on. And he is, in fact, he does have his defenses set up. He has a Marine and a Special Ops at the 130 mark about 10 seconds before the attack occurs. Or, sorry, 20 seconds before the attack occurs. But he is fast-forwarding, so it'll effectively be 10. And the Octos are coming in and attacking the Special Ops and Marine. One of the Octos is half-dead after the Marine gets... Killed- oh, both Octos survive killing the Special Ops and the Marine. So not sufficient defenses. Vikram's gonna have to try harder, use another Marine. That'll probably do it. But I'm a bit surprised he's focusing this much on early economy. Really, the best thing I'd say to do is to build an importer and try to get more infantry. But he has not done that, but regardless, it looks like Vikram has still managed- No, he is still in a bad position. It looks like he's trying to do a Sim City to protect his units, and that's- Honestly, at this point, the best option he has, he is unable to SimCity. He's not able to, I should say, sorry, I should clarify. SimCity, which is actually a term that comes to StarCraft partially, is the act of building one's base in such a way that it becomes very difficult for your opponent to get their units to hit your own. And in Akron, because of the size of the units, Marines and Special Ops can hide in between buildings that are one space apart, or one tile apart, while Octos and Veer class units are two tiles wide, so they can't go between them. 
Autos in particular are hard, li hit, are hard hit because they're melee units. They have to actually walk up to their enemies in order to hit them. And it looks like Kron Abner is trying to save the Octo that did go on a resource processor destruction order that caused it to die. But the other Octo will be able to survive long enough and... Vicar... Oh no, the other Octo is actually escaping. Kron Abner... Oh man, Kron Abner would have actually won that battle. Oh, that is embarrassing. Kron Abner... He... Well, as we saw in the previous iteration, Kron Abner won that battle. And actually we can see from his point of view, he actually won that battle just barely, but he still won it. So he's probably feeling a little bit silly about this right now. But yeah, Crown Aberrant's... Crown Aberrant's attack ultimately not doing much, but it was very close. I mean, I, I can understand why he didn't go for it, because it was a very close call. It was hard to tell if Special Ops would die in time. And he's probably more comfortable going for this... Well, actually, he's not more comfortable going for the late game, but he's not sure. He wouldn't, wouldn't have been sure that it would have worked. It would have worked, but I guess he was... Not fully confident it was worth the risk. So, anyway, his Octo has retreated back to the base. Well, will be retreating back to the base, ultimately. And, yeah, Vikran has not chased it down from the looks of it. So, both players now are not attacking each other. Vikran is going to be able to expand it. He has actually expanded towards the south base, building a couple importers, factory, and an armory. And of course, being that this is a very large map, I am not surprised to see a lot of expansion. I'm a bit surprised Kron Abbott isn't going for more expansion. There are a lot of resource crates in the main base, but I'm a bit surprised he isn't at least expanding to the north side. Possibly this central eastern expansion, or sorry, central western expansion. However, one thing to keep in mind about these expansions towards the center is that they are on a slope. You can't actually build buildings other than comm centers and resource processors next to them. You can have vehicles go through and infantry go through, but larger buildings that could be used for production and defense wouldn't be able to go through. This is actually a slight advantage for Grekim because it means that they can progenerate units next to these crates, but for CISO, it is not an advantage. So I'm actually a bit surprised Kronabert hasn't gone for this. He is over sending a Sepi and an Octo over to the western main, and Vikran has gone for the south main or south secondary expansion behind the main. So both players really just focusing on building up their economy, and an ATHC going towards the... Oh, okay, he's suspecting that Crown Armor is going towards the central northwestern expansion. So saying an ATHC there, and there was another unit that was... Oh, sorry, that's the rally point from the factory. So ATHCs are being sent to that expansion, and Marine is being sent towards the central southwestern expansion. And Machinery is being searched for Vikran, and Crown Armor has already researched his advanced structures. We saw the Spire before. A semi pod has been built, another semi pod is up, and they'll probably be going on patrol pretty soon. It's hard to tell what they're planning on doing. I, I don't know if Crown is planning on going on patrol or just planning on just attacking. Just going out for a straight up attack. He is aware of the ATHC that's coming in towards the central southwest or sorry, central northwestern expansion. And he does send he is sending a semi pod over there to deal with it. Let's see, where is that ATHC? Right now Vikran is about 30 seconds down from Crown Emmer. And here's the ATHC in question. And another ATHC down here, which the Sepipod will be able to take care of. Sepipods are detector units and ATHCs can cloak. So ATHCs are best countered by Sepipods. And this Sepipod is going to, however, not have an easy time killing the ATHC. It's not just Sepipods. You actually kind of need Sepipods with Faropods because Sepipods are not anti-ground units. They are just detectors. So Sepipods with Faropods are the only way that Grekin can reliably get rid of ATHCs because ATHCs don't have a bad anti weapon. As we can see right now, two ATHCs are enough to kill off a Sepipod. I mean, Sepipods do beat ATCs one on one, but Sepipods are also more expensive. It's not the easiest trade off, and it is definitely worth bringing in a bomber. Because remember, Farpods are also cloaked, which means it's going to be a lot easier for them to actually deal with the damage they need to deal without being attacked by the ATCs. Though, on the other hand, Farpods are also tanks, so it's not a bad idea to just leave them uncloaked. However, the ATC, second ATC, has managed to get through unscathed and will be able to attack the Octos hitting the RPs. And the other Sepipods that were sent through, Octos are being sent through to Vikran's south base. Sepipods are being sent to help patrol around this area here, leading to the central northwestern expansion. But the DTC has managed to deal only a little bit of damage before being wiped out. So that's a be sorry, that ATC will do nothing. The pods have been quite useful in detection. Bit surprised if Primer isn't patrolling around the center of the map though, or around his bases. Double check to make sure that no ATCs come in. Faro is also being built near this expansion, which will help out with detection. Faro is also detect, there's not quite as tough as Sepipods. And Vikran defending pretty well against its Octos. Not only we're dealing quite a bit of damage to this tank here, and the... another ATC, sorry, this is... 
That's the same ATHC, I'm sorry. That's the one that was defeated before. So, Crown Aberrant building legal class units while Vikran. This is back about 10 seconds prior to what we were looking at before. So, Vikran just defending against the Octopod attack. No further attacks coming out, but he has the entire south side of the map all to himself. That's a lot of resources, a lot of reserves, a lot of importers, a lot of room for production buildings. So he's in good shape, getting a macrofab in his south base. He has tanks as well, and he doesn't have ground units, so he won't be able to turn them into heavy tanks. But he's getting an yet another ATHC attacking this base. Crown Aberrant has moved behind him, so Crown Aberrant has just... Looks like he... No, he has not destroyed the ATHC yet. He's not sending any pods over to destroy it or done anything to deal with that yet. Just sending semi pods around, sorry, fire pods around to attack the central southeast eastern expansion. His semi pods are damn it. His semi pods are still hanging out here at the center of the map pretty much. I'm not sure why he's not moving them around at all. But he is He is actually progenerating Octoligos right next to, Oh wow, he's progenerating Octoligos right next to Vicarin's south base and southeast expansion, getting a couple of them and then Raising his units once again. And as Farpod now going on the attack. So, Vikran, not sure if he suspects that there is actually a progeneration going on right next to his base. But he is going to be losing... He's definitely losing this, but... Remember, Crown Armor is about a minute ahead of Vikran, And Vikran's going to be able... If he is aware that there's any attacks going on, he's sending a tank there. And unfortunately, these units are right in the path. The Octopods... Sorry, the Octoligos have been built regardless. But the progenerators are... Almost right in the path of the tanks. The tanks should be able to spot them. And yes, they're able to spot them. They are engaging with the Octoligos. The Octoligos, however, are going to be able to be constructed completely by the time the tanks will be able to deal any damage to kill them. So the Octoligos are still going to be effective. But Vikran has a, every everything around the map. Crown Aberrant only has a couple bases. And even then, he only has one base with a lot of RPs in it. The other RPs are over in the central southwestern expansion. But it looks like Crown Aberrant is not going for a lot of expansions. Well, Vikram, of course, is going for a lot of expansions, as he usually does. One of the Octoligos is going down to the tanks. The other tank, the other tank's going to be destroyed way too quickly for it to be much of a difference. The other, Octo the first Octoligo was damaged heavily while it was still maturing, but this Octoligo actually won't be able to kill that tank. The tank has barely lived, but the Farpod and Semipod did still manage to destroy the central southeastern expansion. Now, they just need to move around and kill all the other expansions, because Vikram has a lot of them. And a lot of LC, and now he's getting ground units at the 9.49 mark, which is about half a minute ahead of Crown Aberrant. Crown Aberrant at the... Sorry, half a minute... Oh. No, it was ahead of Crown Aberrant. Crown Aberrant is what we were looking before at the 10 minute mark. With the Farbot and Sibibot protecting the Octoligos. Helping out a bit, but the Tornod and tanks are able to destroy the Farbots before it's able to do a lot of damage. However, the Octoligos are going to be able to take care of this Tornod in no time. The tank, however... This, sorry, Martang is going to be able to deal with the Octoligos. But the big thing is that these RPs have not been destroyed. The units coming out of the base are being heavily damaged, though. This Martank is going to be destroyed before taking it to the Octoligo, and the Octoligo should probably go back and start harassing this expansion. But instead, it is going towards the south base, attacking Vikram's base heavily, destroying one of the infantry that happens to be there, and starting to attack the RPs that are there. Vikram jumping back to about half a minute down from there, setting out his infantry and a mech to, well, not really deal with anything. The Octoligo is able to destroy them before they even get in range. But the Martank is it now able to destroy the Octoligo. It looks like Vikram changed around how he had done that attack. Now, Crown Aberrant has... He's actually started to build up a little bit over in the Eastern Expansion. Sorry, the Western Expansion. Vikram also getting the Western Expansion. Starting the outside, going towards the inside. And he's going to be now fighting Crown Aberrant for this expansion. Unfortunately, Vikram, I think... Well, fortunately for Crown Aberrant, Vikram definitely has the upper hand when it comes to resources right now. Crown Aberrant really did not go for a lot of expansions. He did... Well, at least he tried to damage some of these expansions. He didn't ultimately damage many of them. His far pot, however, coming in, attacking the importers that are exposed here. This importer looks like it won't be able. It had six. Ah, oh, well, it had six reserves in it. So when it was destroyed, that's actually pretty impressive. So the far pod dealt a bit of damage, but Vikran is not producing enough for it to be a big deal. That's he's still got a good buffer of units being built up. So I don't really know what difference that will make, unfortunately. And both players jumping back towards where the importers died at the 12.4 mark. And here we have Gate Tech being built at the south base, which is kind of odd. and surprised didn't build it at the east base, where his armory is not at all under threat of attack. Or towards the west base here. Or the No, he doesn't have an armory here. I thought he had another armory. No, he does not. He only has the armory where in the south base and in the original eastern base. 
Regardless, the gay tech will be researched quite harmlessly, well, without any damage coming to it, so there's really no threat. And Cronhammer now is even more behind, unfortunately. Cronhammer does not have gay tech of his own. He's gonna have, or sorry, chronoporting of his own. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't gotten chronoporting yet. He does have the resources for it, but he has not opted to get it at this point. He's moving his RPs instead towards. Sorry, he is getting chronoporting. I'm silly. He, he, just got chronoporting right after I said he wasn't. So, he is at least getting it. And then jumping back a couple minutes to when the Faropod was attacking the importers. Still, destroying the importers is only going to remove about six reserves, which, is, which compared to 30 or so is not a whole lot. I say four reserves. Some of them were already used before then. And this is also when Martanks and regular tanks come in to destroy the Western Expansion. So Crown America very quickly losing that Western Expansion. And remember, this is from the further past point of view. So this is more likely to actually be the case. Crown America is focused at this point in time. Jumping back about 10 seconds to try to deal with this attack. And moving his RPs away to Vikran's existing expansion, so these RPs are not going to last very long at all. And the Martank's trying to deal what they can to damage them, but the tanks here are really what's going to be able to deal with the damage that's going to stop these RPs from actually doing anything meaningful. And there is going to be no easy way for Chronomer to get out of this. He does have Chronoporting built up. He doesn't have a whole lot of units, though, which is a bit of a problem. He does have Leo class as well, which he only used with the Octoligos that we saw earlier. He hasn't used it since then. But he does have chronoporting, and it looks like he is going to be... I mean, he's chronoporting something. Damn it. He did chronoport something, but unfortunately the map is quite large, and it's difficult for me to figure out what he chronoported. Probably these two units. So if I had to guess, this far pod and sepi pod are what he chronoported back. There's really only that and these two sepi pods down here, which could be chronoported in the first place. So just watch for what happens to this, this far pod and sepi pod, because I'm pretty sure that's what gets chronoported. And Farpod being pulled back. And yes, the Farpod did get chronoported back. The Sepipod that was with it does not chronoport it, so it's only an uppercut Farpod. But the Sepipod in question was destroyed as well. And the other two Sepipods are also dead. So Cronhammer currently does not have any army whatsoever. And Vigrin has a massive army with which to completely obliterate Cronhammer's entire investment of anything. So Cronhammer just double checking the, the chronoport, which. Unless he's sending it to actually attack Vic Vicarin's base, and even then, I don't, I don't see how it actually be able to deal any damage. Vicarin's well defended at that base, and there aren't many bases where he isn't well defended. So I don't see this working out very well. Crown Aberrant, however, he may be able to pull something out of his sleeve. It's just hard to tell. He has very little Crown Energy left, though neither does Vicarin. Both players are running on empty when it comes to their ability to command the past. But Vicarin just has an advantage in terms of the amount of units he has. Having expanded earlier on in the game, and Cronhammer not really expanding, and actually having talked to Cronhammer afterwards, he mentioned he's actually kind of reluctant to expand. He has a very difficult time dealing with many bases at once, which isn't unusual. Uh, multitasking is not something that's easy for a lot of people, but I'm not. That makes me a bit less surprised they didn't expand as much as he would have. But I am surprised he didn't focus on a very rush-heavy strategy with octopods and regular octos when he realized that Vicarin was right next to him, because the close positions on this map aren't much further away than, say, the close positions on Desecrated Temple. So it could have very easily worked out, especially since he had actually managed to deal quite a bit of damage to the RPs as we saw very early on in that first iteration. He dealt a lot of damage to those RPs, but unfortunately he did not actually commit to that attack, and if he had, we probably would have seen him win the game, or at least have a much greater advantage, because Vicarin would simply wouldn't have had the resources to expand as quickly as he did, while Crown Amaret would have had a very nice position to expand from. So at this point, Vicarin is basically playing cleanup crew. Having no real opposition to destroying everything that Cronhammer owns, Cronhammer does have a second block coming in, and it looks like further in the future, no, he has nothing. So Cronhammer is just a matter of waiting for him to surrender at this point. So, interesting game on a map that's probably a bit too large for 1v1. I really didn't intend this map to be played only with four players. I wasn't expecting it to be played 1v1 just because of its size and the fact that it's so accessible. I mean, 512 by 512 is very large. You're going to see a lot of expansion going on. So unless you're planning on playing a heavy expansion game, it's going to be difficult to play as a map. And unlike, say, Westwood Plateau, which is also 512 by 512, the entire map is accessible from the start. Westwood Plateau, on the other hand, there's a map, there's an area circle about, about the size of this path here that's early on accessible that all the players start on. And there's a bunch of islands around the side. Actually, no, I think it's closer to the size of this section here. And then the rest of the map is basically a bunch of islands. A couple islands that contain further resources. So once you get air units, once you get teleportation and transports, then it's easier to get around the map, and the map basically becomes a full 512 by 512 map. 
but early on, it's basically a 320 by 320 map. And here we see Chronomer still, he is trying to go for Chronoporting to help defend himself, but there isn't a whole lot he can do even with Chronoporting, just the size of the army that Vikarin has, all of the heavy tanks, Mars, not even Twin Mars at this point, just regular Mars. And yeah, there's really nothing Chronomer can do. Chronomer is trying to do everything he can, sending back what units he can, and just generally Chrono Cloning, but to no real avail. So, Vikarin is basically fighting against nothing at this point. Cranabrit, like I said, he really should have gone for that rush early on, really should have focused on it. Because if you don't want to play a very expansion-heavy game, then you have to win in the early game. You have to win in the first five minutes or so. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, on a map like this, I should, I should clarify. On a map this large, with this many resources, when, it's, when it is explicitly designed for four players, if you want to play one of you on it and you want to go for a game without a lot of expansions, you're going to need to build a lot of units to rush with, and you're going to need to go for a very early rush game. And even then, you're probably going to have to use it to back up an expansion, or some expansion, to help fuel that, in case your opponent manages to expand off in a direction you didn't expect. So, it's a little bit tricky, but it is worth noting that you should expect expansions on a, a lot of expanding on a map this size, with this many resources spread out as it is. So, very good game to showcase this fact. And still quite an interesting game, especially early on with that rush and a lot of stuff, a lot of action going on in the game. That's still a good thing, just important to keep in mind. Expansion is very important on a map with a lot of resources. So, yeah, Cryhammer is a bit concerned that Grekum is simply not good at land warring, and no, it's more that you need to expand on a map this size. Especially against CISO, because CISO are great at expansion. But just in general, on a map this size, expansion needs to happen. There's simply no way around that. You can't... You can't play this map and not expand. Unless you're in close positions and you really focus on that early rush. Which Conrad almost had. If you had three or four Octos going in and rushing from that, I think he would have been able to destroy Vikarin entirely from the get-go or severely cripple him and then just use the Octos to hunt down the remaining expansion of the Marines and kill them off. But at this point, Crown Aberrant is basically done. He has a one Faro pod left, and it looks like they're just chatting for a while. So at this point, the game is over. No GG, but the game is over. So I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good